birth of Christ in the human heart? The great modern mystic, Angelus Silesius, uttered a fine phrase, quote, If Christ be born in Bethlehem a thousand times, and not in you, you remain in eternal perdition. Close quote. This saying has two sides. One is that in it, the confession of faith is delivered. The proper true Christmas tide must be celebrated in the inner heart of people. And all external celebration of Christmas must be a stimulus to a striving for the inner fact, which then in the winter night of consecration brings up from the depths of our soul, from the darkness that reigns in the heart of the soul as the winter darkness without the deepest powers the soul can find within itself. And these deepest powers feel themselves bound with the nature of what the human being can sense rushing through all earthly becoming, swelling through it and giving it meaning. We find in the depths of our soul something that is with the Christ. If only we go down into the depths of our soul life, where we still unfold our consciousness with our intelligence devoted to the spiritual powers of the world. And the other side of the saying consists of the promise that human beings who today have a proper sense of themselves in the becoming of the earth can bring to their consciousness how true human existence, not being lost as a true human being, is linked to the soul's feeling itself most intimately bound with the essential substantiality of Christ Jesus. However, it has become clear to us through many reflections over the course of the years that Christ consciousness must immerse itself in the progress of the development of the earth, that human beings, as they go from incarnation to incarnation, must come more and more deeply to the understanding of what Christ really is. And we have attempted, in recent times, to deepen this Christ knowledge by creating a source through which we can celebrate, in a deeper sense, the Christmas night of consecration, the winter night of consecration, the celebration of the birth of Jesus. How this is intended will emerge from our reflection today. A great historian of modern times was asked by a person interested in world events why in his books the events that unfolded in connection with the mystery of Golgotha were eliminated, why the books never mentioned intervention of the forces and powers of Christ Jesus in the progression of human events. The great historian was asked why he explains how the popes have intervened in history, kings, armies, the exercise of administrative authority, even natural events. But one can find nothing in his writings about how the forces that were transferred into humanity through the mystery of Golgotha have moved through human events since then. The historian grew thoughtful. Then, after some time, After he had consulted thoroughly with himself about the matter, he said, For the observation of history I must stay with the style I have used in the past. For the Christ forces that swell and flow through world events belong to a sort of primal world into which the human soul is not able to peer. One can indeed observe what effects have emerged from the mystery of Golgotha and from the deeds of Christ, but one cannot describe the particular quality of these Christ deeds in history." Now this is only one of the illustrations that can be given for the fact that even for something like the observation of history, the most illustrious personalities of modern times cannot say for themselves that their souls have already celebrated the Christmas festival the living form, the living essence of Christ Jesus, had not yet appeared in the soul of this historian, so that he could behold how it goes from year to year, from week to week, indeed from hour to hour, through everything that happens in human becoming. 
a thorough historian today can peer into the historical process of becoming and perceive nothing of the fact that since the mystery of Golgotha the power of Christ is present everywhere in that historical process of becoming. We can seek various causes and find them, too, for the fact that to a certain extent in the souls of many people the winter festival of consecration which is devoted to the Christmas mystery has not yet been celebrated. The man who showed to a certain extent out of the depths of his being that he so properly felt the Christian mystery, Goethe, can tell us something about it. Goethe has Wilhelm Meister, whose entire course of development as a human being is so lovingly described, enter an estate. Wilhelm Meister is led around by the lord of the estate, and then is shown the estate's picture gallery. <laughs> it is a peculiar gallery. It contains, in particular, one after another, the principal scenes of human development, how world history flowed among the various nations of antiquity, and also among the ancient Hebrew people, from the age of paradise, from the expulsion on, right through to more recent historical periods. The historical process is displayed in important scenes, ending with the destruction of Jerusalem. And nowhere is there any picture whatsoever containing any scene from the life of Christ Jesus, although the history continues past the mystery of Golgotha as far as the destruction of Jerusalem. Then Wilhelm asks, quote, Why have you nothing at all in your picture gallery about the divine man who brought so much salvation into the development of humanity? I find a gap in the course of this history. I see the temple of Jerusalem destroyed without the entrance of the man whom shortly before they were unwilling to give a hearing. Close quote. And Wilhelm received the answer, quote, To do what you demand would have been an error. The life of this divine man stands in no relation to the world history of his time. It was a private life, and his doctrine was a doctrine for individuals. What publicly comes in the path of the masses among the nations and their offshoots belongs to world history, to world religion, which we consider the prime. What individuals encounter within themselves belongs to the second religion, that of the wise. It was such a religion that Christ taught and practiced as long as he went about on the earth. Close quote. Indeed, a word that speaks deeply to our heart. In reference to the Christ fact, every person living on the earth stands as an individual, as a direct individuality. What can be presented as popular history creeps into the affairs of individual nations for it relates to what happens in the environs of human fate, what happens in the human sphere. What Christ brought into the world, whatever part of the earth's development it may belong with, goes deep, deep inside into what every heart, every human soul feels and experiences, in so far as it feels itself as a human being, in the true sense of the word, a mere human being. We must feel again that this feeling oneself as a human being, first entered the human development of the earth with what came with the mystery of Golgotha. Let us go further. The lord of the estate now leads Wilhelm Meister farther and shows him another gallery, which he keeps hidden. Now they enter another room where the events of the New Testament are displayed. Therefore Wilhelm does not see the events of the New Testament where the world the events are displayed from stage to stage, where one shows the exoteric, but rather in an esoteric space. Before contemplating the events of the New Testament, the soul prepares itself by withdrawing from the affairs of world history belonging to individual peoples. The soul should place itself only on the esoteric foundation of the individual human being. Then it will cross the threshold to where the pictures of the New Testament are arranged. Also the entire New Testament is not displayed in this room, but only the scenes up to the Last Supper. Wilhelm asks, quote, Have you then also 
as you display the life of this divine man as a picture for teaching and example, likewise raised up his sufferings, his death as an example of exalted patience, close quote, he received a significant answer from which is to be gleaned with what dread one can feel the holiest event that has occurred on earth with the being who made his dwelling in a body which we celebrate in the winter night of consecration. Wilhelm will be led into the next level of the esoteric, which will be expressed with a holy thrill as follows, quote, We draw a veil over the, these sufferings precisely because we venerate them so highly. We consider it to be a presumption worthy of damnation to expose to the sight of the sun those instruments of martyrdom and the holy man suffering from them. Close quote. <clears throat> that is how one could feel on an esoteric level in the 18th century. It was good to feel that way esoterically, for we can admit entirely from our point of view that in a certain way, if the pictorial representations particularly of the passion, were not given by the highest, the truly most important artists, then they have served to drag the holy mystery of Golgotha down to the human level. And we can understand the feeling that a man who deeply felt the mystery of Golgotha in those times did not wish to see the distorted images that have been made many times of this holy mystery. He wished to draw a veil over that, because he felt that only the most intimate, sacred forces wished to be supersensibly bound with what is connected to the secrets of the Last Supper. But then what feeling is basically in all this? What should we feel exactly when we wish to comprehend such a feeling in the esoteric experience of the soul? We must comprehend that yearning was in human hearts when something of this sort was seen. The human heart yearned for a conception, a vision of the Christ mystery greater than what one could experience back in those days. In all humility, in still much greater humility than in respect to other aspects of spiritual science, we, ad we may admit to ourselves, really admit, that the finest souls for a long, long time have thirsted yearningly for what Christ knowledge should become for us through esoteric science. What we could know earlier only in another form will soon be seen by souls when the time shall be fulfilled. The consciousness that such knowledge will be able to flash through the human heart and the yearning for it live as a life riddle in the best of souls. People aspire for a Christ discovery commensurate with the great event that happened on Golgotha upon which one can focus one's eye, i.e., the soul's eye as well, when the veils are drawn away. I related yesterday how in a certain way Christ's knowledge had to go back, how in the earliest times of the development of Christianity this Christ knowledge, still fertilized by ancient clairvoyance, was taken up, and how it gradu later gradually subsided. And I read an ancient Gnostic couplet that I will recite here as well in order to refer properly to how an awareness was present in regard to the ancient atavistic clairvoyant knowledge, the Christ, whom we contemplate when we see him coming into the world through the Christmas child, is a being of the universe who grows greater and greater the higher the spiritual spheres into which we turn our soul's gaze, for through these spheres he descends. <clears throat> for that reason a worn-out humanity found it necessary to draw a veil before this event, because it was still not able to point to how in the secret of the child, which every child understands in feeling, lies at the same time the highest wisdom. In this child a being was born who went through the worlds before he appeared on earth. Quote, Jesus said, Look there, O Father, how this being, the human soul on earth, of all evil, the goal and sacrifice, far from thy breath wanders. Look, it flees bitter chaos, helpless how it should find its way through. Close quote. In the dialogue with the Divine Father Being, Christ is shown as he makes his way downward through the world's spheres, 
as he looks at the human soul wandering in chaos but yearning in his direction to which he wants to bring salvation. And therefore Christ speaks further to the Father, quote, Therefore send me, O Father, bearing the seal, the seal of heaven, I descend, I stride through the host of eons. Close quote. In the spiritual spheres, the spiritual worlds are layers on top of one another. The higher we climb, the more we find that the older worlds still live in the present. The one that was the oldest is at the same time today to be found in the highest spheres. What was once bound with the Saturn development we find today in the highest spiritual sphere. And in so far as we bring this succession of spiritual spheres together with the development of time, they are called eons. Quote, I stride to the host of eons, every holy teaching I unfold. Show then the portrait of the gods. And so I give you of the holy path deep hidden lore. Gnosis is its name for you. Close quote. Lost, to a certain degree, to humanity is the consciousness of this cosmic Christ. It had to be lost because the ancient clairvoyance had to disappear. A transitional period had to come, a spiritless eon, so to speak, so that a new kind of clairvoyant sight could come into being. It must, however, direct itself once again up into the spiritual world, must not merely characterize the being who enters the development of humanity through the winter night of consecration with external human vision, but rather must follow how this being climbs from heavenly sphere to heavenly sphere, walks down onto the earth, and gives meaning to the world. Yes, gives meaning to the earth. Quote, Look there, O Father, how this being on earth, of all evil the goal and sacrifice, Far from thy breath wanders. Look, it flees bitter chaos, helpless how it should find its way through. Therefore, send me, O Father, bearing the seal, I descend, I stride through the host of eons, every holy teaching I unfold. Show then the portrait of the gods. And so I give you of the holy path deep hidden lore, gnosis, is its name for you. Close quote. How does this earth actually appear to us, in so far as it is all around us when we consider it in its true meaning? Will you ever say, quote, This is a human being, close quote, when one brings you the sort of corpse whose soul is already dwelling in the spiritual world outside the corpse? Will you ever say, quote, This is, in the full sense of the word, still a human being? Close quote? Precisely, the higher members of human nature are no longer in the soulless corpse. The earth, since the middle of the Atlantean period of development, is in the same situation, however, a soulless corpse. Since the middle of the Atlantean period, the earth all around us, in spite of its beauties, has been in the process of becoming a corpse. It is becoming more and more a corpse. And when you go out and stand before a gigantic cliff, the best you can say to yourself is, quote, that is the skeleton the earth has been forming since the middle of the Atlantean period, close quote. And while you look at what covers the cliff as earth, you see the dying part of the actual earth organism, which was alive only up until the middle of the Atlantean period. Even geology clearly understands that when we walk over the earth or direct a plow through a furrow in the earth, we walk over the corpse of the earth or direct a plow through the corpse. Our geologists have expressed it. And even external science itself, when it begins to think, can do no other than to recognize such things. So when we are surrounded by the earth, we stand basically in relation to death and observe how our ball of the earth is gradually dying away. And now let us imagine that the mystery of Golgotha did not happen that the cosmic entity we call the Christ never entered the development of the earth through the Jesus boys. Then nothing would have come to the earth of the earth development. It would already have been dying by now. 
But the Christ being went through the two Jesus children and then through one of the Jesus children over a three-year period in earth time, went through the mystery of Golgotha, and the earth received a new seed of life. And the earth will not, once the time has been fulfilled, remain in the space of the universe, and the soul will not fall prey to Lucifer and Araman. That would have happened if the Christ had not come to earth as a living seed. But since he has come to earth, will not fall into earthly dust, for a new life entered earth development with the Christ seed. Just as the earth split off from the sun and became a sun, S-O-N, of the sun, S-U-N, now, because the Christ gave earth development a meaning, the earth will be permeated by this meaningful being toward a new development. So we see into the mystery of Golgotha through spiritual science, and we stand trembling in the present time, and feel ourselves called because we have permission to raise the veil from the territories into which sensory perception no longer reaches. But we do not wish to see there only what an age that has developed its destiny gradually in the direction of materialism must indeed see. The possibility begins once again in our time, that those who know their soul to be filled with spiritual scientific impulses will look up to Christ as a cosmic being. Through this, the eternal devotion, it must be said again and again, that we can have for the child of the consecrated Christmas tide will not be diminished. Simple Christian feeling will not be decreased through it. It will rather be deepened when we can therefore feel the Christ in our dear friend Christian Morgenstern felt him, as our dear friend Christian Morgenstern felt him when a poem blossomed from his soul that can appear to us as a resurrection of primal Gnostic ideas, in which at the same time a love of Christ ruled and cosmic wisdom was active. And so we celebrate a new Christmas when in the dark night of materialism voices resound once more, not those of the ancient Gnostics, but fertilized by the same sense which is directed toward the living cosmic Christ. Quote, Light is love, sun-weaving, love-radiance of a world of creative beings, which, through ages unheard of, holds us to its heart, and which at last has given us its highest spirit in the sheath of a man for three years. Then he came into his father's legacy. Now the earth's innermost heavenly fire, that it too may once again become sun. Excuse me, may once become sun. If Christ be born in Bethlehem a thousand times and not in you, you remain in eternal perdition. Close quote. Let us allow the internal winter festival of consecration to move into our souls. Let us allow our souls to feel how a new Christ knowledge must be born in our time. This Christ knowledge of what sort is it then? It connects what is most intimate in the human being and in a way brings the entire being together to the simplest thing of all. It connects the life of a child, not yet the fully developed life of a human being, to the highest cosmic being and becoming. We feel while we contemplate the Christ child, whom we commemorate in the winter night of consecration, the most powerful winter consecration standing before the sight of our soul, which reaches through all eons. And we bind all world becoming, wherever we look, with everything human, with the deepest humanity. That is how those feel who take their feeling from our spiritual science, as the victory over all death will be won through uniting the soul with the Christ being in our time, to which I alluded today on a deeply moving occasion for us at the grave of a friend, torn away from us by the war. However, for so long we could not get a feel for how the loftiest cosmic is related to the most intimate human. Since we could not see the story in its innermost essence in the secret of Bethlehem, that, however, will happen for those who put the mystery of the two Jesus boys before their eyes. There we have the power of the wisest person of the pre-Christian age of Zarathustra in one of the Jesus boys.
We have in one of the Jesus boys the part of human development that flows down from the one side. We have the aura of the other, brightened and illuminated through what proceeded from Buddha. We have the external, physical life, descended from the noblest strains of the ancient Hebrew people. And we have what makes up the sole content of the Jesus boy in the Luke Gospel, leading back to the origin of the earth. For we know that the deepest soul content of the Luke Jesus boy remained behind as the human being walked the earth in the ancient Lemurian age, and that it was stored up by the sacred mysteries and then led down as the Luke Jesus boy was born to the body being born. Hence that peculiar speech of the Luke Jesus boy directly after birth, which only the mother could understand, which was like no language and which also the boy immediately forgot as early consciousness emerged in him. But it was an expression of a secret directly after birth. Basically, much of what we have to lay bare about the Christ mystery is an interpretation of what the Luke Jesus boy said immediately after his birth. So we have understood through our spiritual science the Christ impulse entirely out of the deeper human development of ancient pre-Christian times when to a certain extent the distinctions also cease again, the initiates speak again. When we will have finally understood everything that entered the development of humanity with the mystery of Golgotha, we will also find the possibility of advancing the powers further in every area where there is human development, even in history. However, we must first know who Christ really was before we can, for example, example, speak of him in history as well. When more and more souls within our spiritual movement seek the impulse to ignite the inner light that can be ignited when we descend into the deepest forces of our soul, which human beings can have today, following the mystery of Golgotha, it will be revealed that through such descent the light of Christ really is ignited in each individual soul. This light of Christ becomes a tree the Christmas tree, which will then send forth light in all future human development so that the soul will find what it looks for in the reanimated earth, so that it will find Christ everywhere in the reanimated earth. This it will accomplish. Moreover, the Christ message of spiritual science can be taken so seriously that among the believers in this spiritual science, the Christmas festival will really be celebrated in each individual soul and will show the birth of the Christ knowledge that comes from Christ himself and is therefore a true Christ birth, a birth of Christ in us. This Christ birth must, however, enter into us. True, true is the saying, if Christ be born in Bethlehem a thousand times and not in you, you remain in eternal perdition. And let us add to this very beautiful dictum of the mystic Angelus Silesius, there we want to find ourselves eternally, as we eternally seek the experience of the winter night of consecration, the birth of Christ in the depths of our souls.